Hello everybody and welcome to Fight Episode 4 and we're looking at another character in the Injustice games who has only been in one of them and it is actually Injustice 2. We were looking at Adam and this is the second one, Ryan Choi. That was the fourth Adam. He debuted in a new Adam series back in August 2006. ATOM is a hero in the last DLC pack for the game, voiced by Matthew Yang King. In a single player ending, he upgrades his suit with Brainiac's technology to go subatomic and enter the microverse to rescue his mentor, Ray Palmer. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about only the second Atom, because, or sorry, the fourth Atom, this guy, in the game. Because he's the only one you can play as, and it'll make this part a little bit shorter, which I hope uh, that's what it becomes. So, Ryan Choi, described by DC Solicitations, is a young hotshot professor who is filling the extra spot on Ivy University's teaching staff, and who inadvertently ends up filling the old Adam superheroic shoes. This new Adam is based on a redesign by Grant Morrison. He debuted in the Brave and the Bold one shot, a preview of projects, and then appeared in the series The All New Adam, written by Gail Simone. Choi made his first appearance in the new Rebirth continuity in the Justice League of America, The Atom One-Shot by Steve Orlando and Andrew McDonald. His suit is redesigned to re reassemble Ray Palmer's in the Arrowverse TV shows. Simone claimed that Ryan Choi was entirely her creation. Grant Morrison did not create Ryan Choi. I envisioned him, developed him, and named him. I was given some rough story ideas by Grant. I'm sure they were brilliant, but I didn't read them. My entire Adam pitch was lifted from a pitch I wrote for Impulse that did not get used. He was, a uh, so... When it comes to Ryan's uh, in-universe, he was a longtime prodigy of Ray Palmer. After Palmer's disappearance, Ryan moved to Ivy Town in America to assemble his mentor's place on the staff of Ivy University. Following clues left by Palmer, Ryan discovered a bio belt, allegedly the size and destiny manipulation device used by his predecessor, and became the new Adam, with Palmer's apparent blessing. Though taken with the superhero lifestyle, Ryan is a scientist first and foremost, and approaches many of his adventures from the perspective of scientific discovery and investigation. Ryan has found himself at the center of conflict between forces of science and magic. It has been claimed that the impossible feats performed by Ray Palmer during his superheroic career caused the very fabric of reality to warp in Ivy Town's vicinity, making it a nexus of paranormal activity. Many parties, including the ancient cancer god, McNagala, and the microscopic aliens known as the Waiting, consider Ryan a key player in the war and have made attempts to recruit, capture, or kill him. Some adventurous things that he has done is shrinking the serial killer Dwarf Star, his strict and disciplined proving father and being seduced, kidnapped, and even swallowed alive by the size-changing villainous Giganta. Later, he is led to a mistaken belief that Ray Palmer has become an egocentric madman and Ryan himself may be the only a pawn of his mad fantasies. This is later revealed to be a ploy by, Ray to, by Ray's old nemesis, Kronos. The all-new Adam series ended with issue 25, when Ryan, with some help from the returned Ray Palmer, is able to discern between the truth and the lies fed by Kronos and his new assistant, Lady Kronos, a former sweetheart of Ryan's that turned the crime. This Adam eventually discovered that Ray Palmer never knew of Troy. Instead, the bio belt was a tainted gift from Jaya, and Ray Palmer... Uh, Letters of Cleaver foraging by Kronos meant the force of Ryan trying to accepting the Adam mantle and taking the blame for the staging menaces set against the city. However, due to Ryan's ability in sorting out the mess, besting the Kronos couple by restoring Ivy to normalcy, Ray Palmer finally gave Ryan Choi his blessing to be the new Atom. In the story Justice League Cry for Justice number 1, Ray and Ryan are seen fighting Killer Moth together as they end the battle both on them showing respect towards each other and, Ryan, and Ray asking Ryan to continue using the Atom name. During their brightest day event, Ryan is murdered by Deathstroke and his new team of Titans during their first mission. His corpse is then delivered in a matchbox to Dwarf Star. Okay, now let's go to the New 52 and Convergence. At San Diego Comic Con 2011, artist Jim Lee revealed that Ryan would be one of the members of the new Justice League title drawn by Lee and written by Jeff Johns. The undoing of Troy's death will be one of the numerous changes to DC's continuity caused by the Flashpoint event. During this first story arc of the series, it is mentioned in passing that as a young graduate student, Ryan had helped design one of the components of Cyborg's robotic body. In a Convergence crossover, when the alternate Brainiac miniaturized the universe of the New Earth, Ryan Choi appears to be alive and confronts Ray Palmer, who was battling the Angor universe's Barracuda. Ryan reveals that after his death, his consciousness had survived in the universe where the Atom's masses are shifted to whenever they change size. He later returns to the realm of the living after approaching the flesh form Ray's servid hand to create a new body for himself. After Barracuda is defeated, the two Atoms work together to defeat Deathstroke, avenging Ryan Choi's murder. 
Okay, now we're talking about DC Rebirth. What I talked about before was the new 52 and Convergence. So in Rebirth, it's pretty much the same origin story to start off with, but with more detail. At Ivy League, Ryan finds a, mes a message from Palmer along with one of his size-changing belts, asking the youth to come find him in the Microverse because he got stuck there when exploring a change in time and space. Ryan heads back to his lab using the bio belt that Ray gave him to travel there through the Wi-Fi. When he arrives, he is met by Batman and Lobo, who are there to recruit Ray Palmer into the new Justice League of America. Discovering that Ray is missing, Batman decides to leave until Lobo asks Ryan if he wrote down various equations to update the bio belt on the blackboard. Impressed, Lobo decides that Batman should recruit Ryan, despite Batman not wanting to put him in danger. Lobo says it's Ryan Choice Choice, and Ryan joins the JLA and sometime later heads to the city of Vanity, Oregon to recruit Ray Palmer into the team. So now let's talk about some of his, of his appearances in other media. Ryan Troy Adam was in the cartoon show Batman and Brave and the Bold, voiced by James Sy. Additionally, an alternate universe version named Dynamite, also voiced by Sy, was in it, and he appeared in the episode Deep Cover for Batman as a member of the Injustice Syndicate. Troy first appeared in the crossover event Crisis on Infinite Earths, where he is recruited by heroes from across the multiverse to combat the Anti Monitor due to Troy's status of the, being the paragon of humanity. Of course, I'm talking about the CW Crisis on Infinite Earths. An alternate timeline version of Choi from there, who became the Atom, appeared in Season 8 of The Flash. An alternate universe version of Ryan Choi appeared in an animated movie, Justice League Gods and Monsters, voiced by Eric Bauza. Or, whoops, oh well. The director of Justice League, Zack Snyder, revealed via his personal account that he intended to use Ryan Choi in the film, originally having cast Zang Kai in the role and filmed a scene for him, which we did see in the Snyder Cut of Justice League. His appearance was cut from the final film during post-production. Photos were leaked online then. Uh, he also appeared in LEGO DC Comics Superheroes The Flash, again voiced by Eric Boza. He is also in the Injustice movie, uncredited, but voiced by Yuri Lowenthal. And he has been in two other games, as a playable character in LEGO DC Supervillains, voiced by Jason Marsden, and in Scribblenauts Un Unmasked, a DC Comics adventure. And when it comes to this game in Injustice 2, the Atom was in the... Uh I think the second DLC pack for this game, and we're gonna go look at his moves right now. I think I, I think I talked pretty clearly about everything with the atom that I wanted to share. So he has a bunch of he has actually seven different moves. As you can see, there's one where he has a giant ground stomp. He has this sort of uh, weird wave effect over his uh, body when he has a special move to use with his shrinking powers. And of course, why don't we talk about his uh, character ending in this game? Your story ends here. I can't let Dr. Palmer down. Don't know if you could hear that. Brainiac's armor made him impervious to harm. From the outside, at least. He'll survive this minor brain surgery. He just won't be able to control his scholarship anymore. Crisis averted, I can get back to searching for my missing mentor, Professor Ray Palmer. Last year, Palmer dove headfirst into the microverse, a subatomic dimension he himself discovered. In case he got lost, he left behind a trail of clues and designated an asthmatic research fellow, yours truly, to follow them. That trail's gone cold. Which is why I'm upgrading my bio belt with Brainiac's technology. It's my turn to go subatomic. I'm not the strongest or bravest hero out there. But Professor Palmer, he's an Einstein level genius. He trusted me with his astonishing legacy. The Atom is not going to let him down. I don't know why there was so much noise in the music in the background for his uh, character ending. But anyway, we're going to look at his uh, costume. See what I have unlocked. So yes, he's level 30 now. And Dimensional Helmet of Big Bang Visor. You can read those and just go through each one how it, how it looks a little bit differently. Don't really... Eh, I don't know. He is a shape-changing character. I think I like him more than Ant-Man, to be honest. I think he's more powerful than Ant-Man. 
And yeah, his character ending, his character in the uh, Injustice Universe is basically exactly like how he is in the comics. Okay, I know this video is a little bit blurry. I apologize about that. I don't. It's blurry on my end as well. Uh, so yeah, the most unique thing about Adam to uh to a customizer change is his belt. His belt symbol and colors change. All oh, I guess everyone's colors change, which we will uh also look at. And then we'll go to the legendary multiverse. Yeah, barely any pants for him here, or for uh changing costumes. But yeah, here's his belt. But first, let's look at his abilities. So, making matter, mass size, massive slam, air atomizer, atom feeder, breaker bomb, and amplified atomizer. So, uh, those are his special moves. And now, let's look at his uh, colors. So, here's his classic rebirth, regime alternative. Alternate Kronos, of course, reference to the Ray Palmer's greatest enemy. Uh, White Dwarf, that last one was able to devote. Alternative Rebirth Alternate. The Demon ones, which you got from pre orders. I don't know if that's the only way to get them. And then the God ones, God, Alternate God. And then the Locked ones, I do not have yet. A Bomb Alternate. DC 1 million armor. DC 1 million alternate. That one I don't really like as much. Regime. White Dwarf alternate. Kronos alternate. And Devo, the classic one. Of course, reference to the Flash villain, the Thinker. And then the very uh, special tournament one. That's pure gold. And Electro, which is pure silver. There we go. So that was the Atom stuff for customizing his character and now let's go to the legendary multiverse there's a, a trial here we go Adam the DLC ones yeah I'm just gonna pause it the hidden video I have here <laughs> who cares so I have spent and I already I just spent these literally I just spent the guild credits and coins but did not save so that's why you will not be seeing me do it live in the video. Okay, so I have level 30 Adam, so that's okay. I have spent the 1 million credits for him. I have done 79 out of 100 uh, Fermion Fury as his final hit. I completed a Survivor event with Adam. 60 out of 100 Super Move finishes and 150 out of 200 villains defeated as the Atom here. Okay. Maybe I didn't think that one. This one seems pretty easy to get, though. Here is uh, 1.2 million out of 3 million damage dealt with Adam. 42 out of 100 forward or back throws as final hit. 110 out of 150 sidekick events completed. 30 out of 100 meta challenges. And that last one, which is called Little Problem, has not been completed yet, but I need to do that one. So that one might take a while. Maybe not. 100 out of 100 super moves used with Adam. I have that one. 118 out of 200 multiverse events completed. 421 out of 1,000 match victories. And 167 out of 250 of his gear sacrificed. And oh, this one. Yep, I spent 50,000 guild credits on uh, the Adam here. And I just need to get that last tournament go, go now completed. And I get another diamond mother box. And now, do, do, do. here, 100 regen tokens sacrificed. Go now must be completed, so I need to do that one still. That one will get like two completed from my list here for the item. And I have completed the Master Bow Simulator event with him on very hard. So I think that's all I... Oh, actually, let me go here, because I think... Yeah, you get a special belt for the item if you get all of that. So let's look at the next character I'll talk about, Atrocitus. 200 heroes defeated, I still need his meta challenges, meter burn, special move, and uh, super move finishes. I need a complete master battle simulator event with him. 200 heroes defeated, 94 out of 100 meta challenges, 59 out of 100 super move finishes. 
Oh, I already talked about that one. Uh, 12 out of 108 pounds as final hit. 2.2 million out of 3 million damage dealt. But I have 54 out of 200 guild events completed with Atrocitus. Every people say Atrocitus is uh, ones that are the hardest to get. And I kind of agree with that. So there's 1059 out of 1,000 match victories. 186 out of 300 multiverse events. You get it. You can pause it if you care. So with that said, that is the Atom um, Fight Episode 4. I hope you enjoyed and have a great day.